25 past. This is Drive. Drive. With Joe Joe Laverty Laverty. on ABC Radio Adelaide. And you're hearing in the news today that a man will face court charged with a drug offence over the death of a woman who was found unconscious at a house at Adelaide's Redwood Park. He's been supplied, uh, charged, I'm sorry, with supplying a drug of dependence. And the court heard, and you've heard this in the news with Wendy Glamacek, that he allegedly injected his partner with methamphetamine and now Loxone after she'd overdosed on heroin. This story aside, I don't want to speak specifically about this case because it is obviously before the courts, but the story itself reveals a little of the underbelly of our society, that people use and abuse drugs every day, and sometimes people die. The most recent National Wastewater Drug Monitoring Program report that found that some sites in South Australia have either relatively high use of drugs and regional sites using drugs are well above average levels. Michael White is the Executive Officer, South Australia Network Drug and Alcohol Services. Michael, do South Australians have a drug problem? Um, South Australians use drugs at about um, similar rates to the rest of the country. Um, It's around about 16% of people use drugs. Um, We tend not to use the word abuse anymore um, because of its stigmatising effect. So I'd prefer to use the term drug use. Sure. And what about, so we we know a little about the use of illicit drugs. What about prescription medication? Is that a big problem? Um, So about one in 20 people have used a prescription drug in 2019 for a non-prescribed reason. So prescription drug use um, is uh, less than cannabis, but more than most other drugs. So methamphetamine is about 1% in the same year. Ecstasy is 1.3. Cocaine is about 2.5. They're South Australian figures. Mm. And how often do people get into trouble with their drug use, end up having to go and go to hospital, for example, or worse, die? Um, so in 2020, there were about 116 drug-induced deaths in South Australia. Um, under half were opioids, about 30 were sedatives, 19 were amphetamines and about 14 were antidepressants. That doesn't include deaths um, from alcohol, um, which are very significant. Um and in terms of hospitalisations, I don't have that data, but it's probably about one in 20 people who go to hospital go there for a drug-related reason. And what are the opioids that people are overdosing on? Um, so um, probably the majority of people who are using opioids are using um, prescribed opioids off script. Um, so they're using things like oxycodone, oxycontin um, or um, fentanyl that's come out of the pharmaceutical system. Um, a small number are using heroin. A smaller number use heroin now compared yeah. to... And a lot compared. of those uh, those painkiller people, I have some of that in my cupboard at the moment from surgeries yeah, that we've had over do. the years. So yeah. it is it is prescribed um, to people, to everyday people. How is it getting into the market where people are selling it and, and using it for as a party drug or I'm going to say abuse, abuse it? Um, I'd prefer if you didn't use the term abuse it and actually your union requires that you don't use the word abuse. So, um, but I'll stop there. Um, it comes into the marketplace because we have very, we have historically had very high rates of prescription, um, probably inappropriate prescription, um, and it's also manufactured um, internationally and um, then people import it illicitly. I see. So so it's coming from overseas, but also it, is doctor shopping a thing, going and pretending you have some kind of serious um, something? Doctor shopping has reduced dramatically with the introduction of the Safe Script program. So if you get a prescription filled somewhere and um, you then get the same prescription filled within a a short period of time, uh, it'll set up a red flag 
So um, now that we track prescriptions, that's been a lot better. Mm. Educating doctors about the risks of prescribing opioids for longer periods has seen a shift in prescribing behaviours over the last decade, um, which has been very positive. Um, and um, it still remains a very small number of people that we're talking about um, in in terms of the number of people who are using um, opioids. And you have concerns for the upcoming festival season? Yeah, well, one of the issues is that um, people, um, when they buy drugs, don't know what they're buying. So we've seen in New South Wales the sale of um, what's supposed to be MDMA, contaminated with nitazine. Um, um, a nitazine is a very strong opioid. And so people are expecting to take a drug that makes them happy and party um, and instead it knocks them out and puts them to sleep. It's really important that people know what they're taking. So we are advocating very strongly for the introduction of drug checking or pill testing at festivals. It's the seatbelt of um, um, festivals, if you like. Um, we don't condone drug taking. We don't. We're not encouraging it. But we do think that it's a lot better that people don't end up in hospital or ramped um, because of these issues. And we would much prefer them not to die. And pill testing has been shown to save lives. Michael White, thank you so much for your time. Um, he's the Executive Officer of South Australian Network Drug and Alcohol Services. Um, a, a few more comments coming through about the use of the word abuse and addiction. Uh, this text says, geez, not using the term addiction will really solve the problem. Uh, abuse was the word that Michael White had a problem with me using. Another text says, I think there's a lot of inequality regarding the consequences of illicit drug use. If a successful rock star or movie star is known for using illicit drugs and it's unlikely to affect their career prospects and we may actually improve them. Edgy image. However, if a doctor, professor, judge, police officer, politician or broadcaster were caught using illicit drugs, then it was most likely ruin their career prospects for life, says George, and says, thank you for your program. You're most welcome. Uh, another text says, drug use and abuse. Your current guest is not helping the situation by being politically correct about drug abuse. Call it what it is. Um, another text says, abuse, 99% of illicit drug use is not problematic. It's, I don't know. There's probably a lot of research which Michael is aware of much more than I am about how using particular words uh, will will help or not help the situation, and I'm happy to go with what he suggests, but uh, I, I will probably keep calling it drug abuse because that's the language that we have used for the longest time. You abuse the drugs. You, you're abusing them. They're there on a prescription in particular. They're there for you take one in uh, one every three hours, but instead you're taking four every hour. That's that's abusing the drugs. You're selling them to somebody else. That's abusing the system. System.